Hello everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we are gonna be adding some emulators onto the Clockwork Pi and also loading some PlayStation games onto here because that was one of the things I didn't cover in my previous video. And once you actually get this thing updated to the latest firmware, um, it is a lot more capable um, right out of the box. So you don't have to do quite as much um, technical stuff as I expected because actually a lot of it comes pre-installed um, on the new update, update, update. So yeah, let's get into the video. Before we go any further into this video, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to my friend John uh, over from RDX, the Facebook page where retro stuff happens. It's a really, really cool page. Go and check it out. I'll leave the link in the description to that. Um, I'm not very good at software related stuff. So um, John came over and we've sat here for a couple hours just getting this all sorted. And he spent last night, uh, like three hours last night, trying to research it all and get it all sorted. So honestly, a massive thank you to you, John. And hopefully, um, all of the work that you've put in will translate this into an easy step-by-step -step tutorial for people like me who are clueless at software stuff. So this is my laptop. Let's go ahead and get into it. So there's two things right away that you're going to need to do. You're going to need to download FileZilla, which basically allows you to communicate from a Windows device um, or potentially even a Mac device with a Linux-based device. So it just means you can talk to it um, straight easily and you can just browse your Linux device as if it's a Windows one. And it makes everything very, very easy and on the eyes and easy to look at and read. Uh, the second thing you're going to need to do is make sure you update your Clockwork Pi to the latest firmware. So once you've updated your Clockwork Pi and you've headed over to FileZilla, on your laptop, go over to Tiny Cloud on your device, and what this will show you is a couple of bits of details that we're going to need. The first one is the fact that it says ID and key CPI CPI. Now that is completely standard. Obviously, it's just Clockwork Pi. Um, it's completely standard across all of them, so that's uh, pretty simple. And then you've also got your um, your kind of MAC address, which is what you're going to need to put into the host box um, on FileZilla. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing you're going to do is enter your uh, MAC address into the host box. Uh, very, very simply, just type it out. Everyone's is going to be similar, uh, but have a couple of different digits on the end of it. Then put username and password as CPI. And then in your port box, put port 22. This should be the same across all devices, um, so no changes there. Go ahead and click Quick Connect, and there'll be a bunch of dialog boxes which will pop up because um, it's the first time that we're doing this. Um, just go ahead and trust the device and click OK to all of them. And then you'll be able to see your laptop and your Clockwork Pi files on one screen. It's a gorgeous site and you can just literally drag folders around and it's beautiful. Also, you're going to want to make sure that you're connecting your Clockwork and your laptop to the same Wi-Fi because it's going to be doing all of this through your Wi-Fi connection. So once you've got your ROMs, wherever you've stored those um, on your laptop or computer, um, saved on your left-hand side of the files that are on the right-hand side, we're gonna be going through the files on the Clockwork Pi and installing the games. It's very, very simple. I'm gonna head into Neztopia, which is the NES emulator, and you can literally just drag the ROM straight over there. It will install over Wi-Fi, and that is how simple it is installing games using your laptop. Now, if you want to download your Super Famicom and Super Nintendo games, head over to the SFC file and drag any sort of Super Nintendo or Super Famicom ROM into that file, and bish bash bosh, you'll be able to play them. And the whole thing's happening live, so you can literally play these on your Clockwork Pi the second they're loaded on there. So now what we want to do is talk about adding emulators that aren't already appearing on the Clockwork Pi. So this will help you tackle kind of your Genesis and uh, other things like that, um, obviously different sort of computer games and all that kind of stuff. So create a folder um, in your Clockwork Pi called ROMs. Now to do this, you've got to click um, Create Directory on the right click, and I'm just going to rename mine to ROMs just to make it very, very simple. And in there, you're going to want to create a new directory called PS1. And you can also um, now create directories for other things such as Mega Drive, and that's one of the ones that I'm going to be doing on here right now. And then it's literally just a case of dragging your ROMs into the files that you've just created. So now that we've done all the different file creating and dragging and dropping and all that lovely confusing stuff, now we're going to head back over to our Clockwork Pi and I'll actually show you how to run everything. So we're going to need to install a couple of different emulators and stuff, but we can do all of that on here and it's very, very simple. 
So once you've downloaded the ROMs onto the machine, you want to install the emulators to actually play it. So go into RetroArch. So now you need to go down to Download Core, and I installed some um, Mega Drive games onto here. So what we need to do is install a Mega Drive slash Genesis emulator, and it's funnily enough named Genesis emulator pretty much. And then it will download that at the bottom. You've got to obviously be, make sure you're connected to the internet for this. So once you've installed the emulator, head back over to RetroArch, and then you're going to go Load Core, and then you actually load the Genesis Core, load content and then scroll down through your file directory in where we installed the uh, ROMs before which mine is in games and then carefully labeled Mega Drive and then you can load the game through there and it will actually show you the, uh, the core of the emulator and then everything works and it looks bloody brilliant I actually haven't played this yet so this is my first time playing it with you guys there we go oh a little bit of screen tear in there I haven't actually played this so I don't know if it's all gonna run smoothly but actually looks too looks pretty good oh little bit of a uh, little bit of lag what do you think of that John looks alright mate is the lag quite normal I've seen worse dude you've seen worse but I've seen better <laughs> it doesn't look too bad actually I mean there's a little bit of um, screen tear but it could just be it looks like it's a really really like high resolution so maybe it's running a bit too high. There you go, that looks really good. And you can also download other cores, alternative cores. Yeah, yeah. Rather than the one you can you find the one that you want to uh, yeah. find a sweet one. So once you've installed your PlayStation games onto the Clockwork Pi, you can go into Retro Games and then scroll over to PCSX, which is your PlayStation emulator. Ignore this screen by pressing Start and then you can click Load CD Image. And now you want to scroll down through the file system which you installed the games in. Um, it might be different to you, but if you followed my tutorial exactly, then it will be in the exact same place. Go down to ROMs, PlayStation 1, and here is my Spyro ROM that I installed onto here. Now it takes a couple of seconds to load up, and then you pretty much get straight into it. So one of the things you might notice is that none of your buttons are working. So you click Menu, go over to Controls, Player 1, and you're going to need to go through here and map all of these. Now, this isn't too difficult. You just press um, start on each one and then actually just press each of the, uh, the different buttons until every single one is um, mapped. You also need to make sure that you've mapped your start and select. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere with this tool. And then once you've actually mapped your controls, you can go ahead and actually enter into your game. Ignore all the stuff about the memory cards because that's not going to work. And here we are, we're in the game. So it takes a little while on Spyro to actually get to some gameplay. So I'll go ahead and go through all of this and then I'll show you the gameplay and how it looks. And there we go. It looks blimmin' brilliant. It's super, super smooth. In fact, I'd say PlayStation is probably um, one of the emulators that shows um, just the capabilities of the clockwork and how clean everything can be. Um, I still need to go through and actually map the rest of my controls because that isn't currently working. Uh, but it's all very, very simple to do. Um, obviously triangle is your top button, circle is that one, cross is that one, and square is that one, and then L1 you can now map to your um, buttons that we added in the last video. I actually went ahead and tucked the wires under the back here which is a much neater way of doing it. So L1 there, and then L, uh, R1, L2, and R2, and then you can go back and um, now we've actually got our buttons mapped so you can scroll around with your back uh, buttons that we've put on before and hooray that's pretty much it I don't need to say anything else just go ahead and play your games it's such an amazing feeling actually getting this thing up and running because it is super super cool um, I seriously struggle with um, any sort of software stuff um, so John thank you very much for your help you showed me how to make this thing look very very easy hopefully that it will translate into tutorial and you guys will find this just as easy um, it's been quite difficult trying to find um, good tutorials on this because everyone speaks in a language that I really don't understand um, when it comes to all the kind of technical jargon and stuff. But hopefully this video will show you just how simple it is um, to get your Clockwork Pi game shell um, up and running and playing all of your classic games. And honestly Spyro was one of my um, classic games that me and my brother used to religiously play um, all the time. So yeah. 
Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.